everyone as you're joining on share this broadcast and say father i received the prophet's reward if you believe in jesus share this broadcast and share this, and receive the prophet's reward holy holy are you lord oh yes oh yes oh yes oh yes holy I'm telling you as you're joining on say father I receive your wisdom on my life I receive your presence I receive your spirit I receive your grace I receive your glory I receive the prophet's reward on my life share this broadcast saints I need over a hundred people get the gospel out Rete coranta maranda baranda la basia. 
vele maso kole vandele vaso kole mandele vaya. Repe coranta maranda maranda. Rapa corrente te. Rele vele vasa paladaya. Molo cose feredion. Ranta paladios. Repe carrobo sorra mandia. Repe kirianto. The spirit of the living God. The spirit of the living God. May he rest on you tonight. The spirit of the living God. As I stand in his presence. Tonight. May he rest upon you. Expect the Lord to do. Beautiful things in your life. Expect him to do beyond what you prayed about. This is the grace and the glory of Jesus Christ. Let him be himself. Let him demonstrate himself to you. The Lord is God. The Lord is King. The Lord is Lord over everything, everything, everything. The Lord is God. Jesus, you're my King. The Lord. 
just heard the Lord singing that to me one day. He gave it to me, the Holy Spirit. And it's a worship song. Those of you all, just, you ain't even got to sing all that well. Just sing unto the Lord. Of course, don't let nobody hear you. He feels me. But sing unto the Lord. Have those moments where you just sing unto him. Tell him how amazing he is. He want to hear that. He want to hear that. He want to hear you worship him and make him feel celebrated. Ah, mm. Celebrating Jesus always sounds good to him. Now, it might not sound good to people now, <laughs> but celebrating Jesus always sounds good. Oh, 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 oh. Your 
those of you guys, you're joining on Share This Broadcast. Saints, I'm about to minister the word on here. We give God all the praise. Did you pray in the spirit today? What scripture did you meditate on? Because saints, when you're anointed, you need a focus on the word of God. Because this word of God, it purifies you. What did it say? I believe in Psalm chapter 119. It said, how could a young man cleanse his way but by taking heed to the word of God? This is so beautiful, the word of the Lord. And the words that he speak to you are spirit and they are life. So you want this in your soul, in your soul, in your spirit. So every single day, you want to make sure that you get this word in your heart. Perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways. It's a love so undeniable I, I can hardly speak peace so unexplainable I, I can hardly think of deeper still
shall die. Glory, oh, your Adonai. Glory, Messiah, Messiah, Messiah. We lift you higher, Messiah, 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 Messiah. Perfect, all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways. Everybody, blessings to you in Jesus' name. Blessings to you in Jesus' name. Now, saints, I'm talking to you about the prophet here. The word of the Lord concerning the prophet. When you're a prophet of God, take that time for yourself to uh, allow Jesus to mature you. Because a lot of times, even when you get prophecy, the Lord wants you to be a steward over that prophecy. He wants you to protect that prophecy. If you remember, what did Jesus tell the disciples? I, I want to show you something. I want to show you something in the scriptures that Jesus began to speak to the disciples when they was on the Mount of Transfiguration. And this is something that you want to remember when you're dealing with the Lord because sometimes he's going to uh, permit you to know certain things and you have to be a steward of what he's sharing with you. Um, always know if you, if you betray the divine secrets of God, ultimately here's what's going to happen to you. You lose divine favor and you don't want to lose divine favor. You want to protect the favor of God that's on your life and you want him to be able to trust you with more secrets, with more understanding. Uh, and more of his grace. Now, Jesus did this with Peter, James, and John. In, with Peter, James, and John. Matthew 17. Let's go to Matthew 17. He did this with Peter, James, and John when they were heading to the Mount of Transfiguration. Now, look at this, saints. It says, after Jesus... Let them see Elijah and Moses. After Jesus uh, allowed them to step into the spirit realm. Here's what begins to take place. All of a sudden, they go from uh, seeing all these visions experiencing all these visions. And then Jesus begins to tell them something as a result of what they saw. That was very powerful. He began to share this with them and he told them, he said, do not tell this vision to no man. He said, do not tell this vision to no man. This is what he says. And this is so powerful. This is so powerful. He said, do not share this vision with no man. Now, why is Jesus saying in Matthew chapter 17, do not share this vision with no man? Because this is why I want you to see, saints. This vision that Jesus allowed them to see was not for everybody. So you have to understand this as a prophet. There'll be moments where God will give you open visions. He'll show you things in your sleep. And he'll even show you things about people. And it's not for you to voice it. It's for you to behave wisely. Let me tell you something. Do you know everything God tell you about a person? You're not supposed to go tell them. There are some things that God tell you about people that is for you to behave wisely. You say, prophet, how do you know this? Look at David. Remember David, he knew things about Saul, but he didn't go and prophesy to Saul. And he didn't say, thus saith the Lord Saul, God told me to replace you. 
He didn't do that because it would have added fuel to the fire, which you have to also have discretion about knowing when God wants you to add fuel to the fire and when God telling you to behave wisely. Because there's times where God, he really don't care about or what people are going to say. And there's times where God will tell you, hey, uh, you don't have to go through this persecution. Just avoid that. Just avoid this or just avoid that. It's just the flow of the spirit. And as a prophet, stop deciding how God is going to flow. You don't always know how he's going to flow. Sometimes he flows spontaneously. And if you got everything set uh, on uh, how God is going to operate, you'll interfere with the spirit of God. All right. You want to be someone that he know that he can maneuver whatever way he wants with you. And that's the beautiful thing about Jesus, saints. As I'm growing in wisdom, as I'm increasing in wisdom, I'm seeing the beauty of Jesus in how he does so many things to protect us. Sometimes if you have a parent that don't let you go to every party, you'll think that the parent is stopping you from having fun. But the parent not stopping you from having fun, there's a time where you're going to have fun, but the parent knows that you're, you're, you're going to be in the danger zone. Something can happen to you. And this is how Jesus does a lot of times as a prophet. He, as uh, when you're a prophet, he'll protect you. And he'll tell you, don't do this. Don't go there. Don't connect with this person. You think, oh, the Lord don't want me to experience that. No, no. He protecting you from something you can't see. Have you ever had Jesus restrain you from revealing your business to a person and then you find out that the person is jealous of you or the person despises you or the person gave wrong reports about you to somebody else and you're like, oh, no wonder God restrained me. I, I wanted to and I felt to go there with this person. It might be your girlfriend. You might have, as a woman, you might have a girlfriend that, that you feel, hey, we cool, we cool. But you feel a restraint from God. Like, don't tell them this. And let me tell you this. Let me tell you something that's very wise here. Do you know when you get free from your past, you might be free from your past. But you might go tell your past to somebody and they might use it against you. Be careful of that as well. Because sometimes people, you might tell them that you used to smoke cigarettes. They might go tell somebody, you know, they're a smoker. You're not even a smoker no more, but they took something that God delivered you from and now they're using against you to defame you. So just be wise in all things. And sometimes people don't know you, need to know your whole story because they don't know how to handle it. Sometimes people don't need to know where you came from because they'll use that against you when you're going where you're going. And you don't want that to happen. Some stuff you don't need to reveal about your past to people. That's none of their business. You understand this? Of course, you can testify, let the, let the glory of God be revealed concerning your life. But behave wisely in letting people know certain sides of who you used to be. Because you don't want that to interfere with who you are now. Because saints, there's, there's, we live in a, a, a very, uh, we live in a bipolar generation. So people will be double-minded. You understand? You can tell them that God set you free from lying. They'll still treat you like a liar. You can, watch, if you tell somebody that you used to be a thief, you can be completely delivered from being thiefing uh, or thiefing or, or, or stealing. You think that they're going to leave their jury around you? Because the devil going to try. And saints, here's what Satan does as the accuser of the brethren. His job is to keep on repeating who you were. His job is to keep on repeating what you did. So you want to be very cautious of that, so, uh, children of God. You don't want to, sons and daughters, you don't want to keep on uh, exposing who you are to people. Because they'll use that against you. And you don't want that to happen. So... Know what to protect. Now, here's what John, uh, Matthew chapter 17 says. It says that as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them saying, tell the vision to no man until the son of man has risen again from the dead. So their job was to protect this until Jesus rose from the dead. 
Do you know that there are certain things that you shouldn't say until God gets you out your situation? Because how do you rise from the dead? You rise from a dead situation. You rise from dead finances. You rise from sickness in your body. You rise from uh, attacks. You rise from people coming against you. This is how you rise from the dead. There are ways that you rise from the dead that you have to protect. All right? So be, be very knowledgeable of this. Because... There are certain things that you shouldn't say while you're in your process. Are you catching me? There are certain things that you should not say when you are in your process. When you're in the place that God has you. Protect that until you rise. Protect that until the Lord resurrects you. Protect that until the Lord glorifies you. There's some things God don't want you to talk about while you are in your uh, dead place. You have to protect that. You have to guard that. Don't let everybody know the ins and out while you're being processed. Sometimes the Lord wants you to be a steward of that information and, and guard it. Now, you see in Matthew chapter 17, verse 9, once again, it says, As they came down from the mountain... Jesus charged them saying, tell the vision to no man. Uh, I, wa I want to say this. I want to say this. Let's go to verse three in Matthew chapter 17. Behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus and then answered Peter and said, Jesus, is it good for us to be here? Now, here's what I want you to see. As a prophet, there is a time as you're advancing, as you're growing, as you're maturing, you will meet the mantles of Elijah and Moses. Because when God is raising you up as a prophet, you're going to be a leader to people. You're going to be uh, a voice of God to people. You're going to be a voice of instruction, a voice of counsel so there's going to come a time where the Lord is going to use you. And so like he used Elijah and Moses as you advance, because there's levels to this. And as you get deeper in the spirit and you get deeper in the love of God and get deeper in uh, the grace of God. You're going to find that the Lord will start. Um, allowing you to have more authority. Uh, you'll have more boldness. Uh, you'll have more grace. Uh, you'll have more uh, tenacity. You'll have more endurance. And you'll also have more carelessness. You won't care about what people say about you. You won't care about if what God is telling you to do offends anybody. You won't care about that because you know that your allegiance is to Jesus and you got to fulfill what he has told you to do. And you're going to stand before him and you want your master pleased with you. So even as Jesus met Moses and Elijah, when Jesus is inside of you and you're walking that Jesus walk, there's a time where you're going to meet the mantles of Elijah and Moses where that means that the glory and the fire of God is resting upon your ministry. Now, here's what happens. Remember uh, what Jesus was doing. He was praying. All right. He was praying. So prayer steps you in to deeper levels of the supernatural. And I advise you praying in the spirit. You want to pray in the spirit as much as possible. You want to pray in the spirit nonstop. And, and saints, as you're praying in the spirit, you're receiving mysteries from God. So you're going to be able to uh, know certain things and you're going to be able to decipher the word better. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 22, verse 36. They said, Master which is the greatest commandment? 
Look at this, saints. They say, Master, which is the greatest commandment? Look at Jesus' response to all of them. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Now they're asking Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? Jesus doesn't tell them to pray. Jesus doesn't tell them to sing a song. His greatest commandment to them in verse 37 was, he said, thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. Now, saints, I want you to understand loving the Lord with all your heart, loving him with all your soul. These are realms with all your mind. If I love the Lord with all my mind, that means that I have to be consumed with the mind of Christ, the word of God. I can't let jealousy, hatred, uh, bitterness come on the inside of my mind. When you loving the Lord with all your mind mean that you operate in Philippians chapter four. You only think upon these things that are pure, lovely, virtuous, and of a good report. You can't worry. You can't fear because you can't love the Lord with all your mind if you're fearful and worrying. Remember the Bible saying in 1 John chapter 4, uh, I think it's 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, if I'm not mistaken, it, but it's in 1 John. It said, uh, perfect love casteth out fear. Remember that, saints? It said, perfect love casteth out fear. So when we deal with perfect love, yeah, that's 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. That's correct. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear because fear has torment. So when I'm operating in uh, the love of God with my mind, I'm not letting myself become fearful. And you want to be careful of that, that you don't that you don't hate God with your mind, but you love him with your mind. Because when you hate him with your mind, you'll start thinking stuff. You'll start uh having contrary thoughts, evil thoughts. If God tell you not to fear, you'll still be fearful. If God tell you not to worry, you'll still be worried. If God tell you not to be intimidated, you'll still be intimidated. If God tell you not to get depressed, you'll still be depressed. If God tell you not to be discouraged, you'll still get discouraged. So when we deal with loving the Lord with all our mind, that's our thought life. Be careful what you let in your thoughts. Love the Lord with all your soul. That's your emotions. That's your emotions. That's your emotions. You don't want to have your emotions uh, being hateful towards God. And what are hateful emotions towards God when you're depressed, when you're discouraged, when you're weary? You can't love God in that state. If you ever studied, if you got discouraged, studied how you start thinking negative thoughts. Look how discouragement invites negativity. Look at how, if you get uh, weary, how you start getting frustrated with God. That's not, that's not the Holy Ghost. That's demonic. You start even praying disrespectfully. You'll start talking to the Lord disrespectfully. You'll start seeing the Lord from a defeated point of view, and that's not good. So those emotions cause you not to love the Lord. So that's how you love the Lord Jesus with all your soul, all right? And love the Lord with all your heart. Here's the powerful thing about this. When I love the Lord with all my heart, that means that I don't treasure anything before him. There's nothing that can get in between me and Jesus. Not even money, not cars, not houses, not fame, not woman, not, uh, not children, not, not uh, doors, opportunities, relationships. Nothing can get in the way of me and Jesus. When I love the Lord with all my heart, that means that I treasure him above all else. So whatever he asks me for, he can have it. If he asks me to sow seeds, sow money, I'll sow money. If he asks me to leave a relationship, I'll leave a relationship. If he tells me to leave my father's house, I'll leave my father's house. 
Whatever he requires of me, I'll do it. So now you see what love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind means. That's why Jesus will go to James and John and say, uh, follow me. Even if they was with their father, follow me. Because this is how they all love the Lord with all their heart. Praise God. Praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ain't that powerful, saints? That he can empower you to love him above everything. Nothing can cause you to stumble. Nothing can cause you to miss. Nothing can cause you to delay, be stubborn. Nothing can cause you to turn away from Jesus. You'll let the dead bury the dead. You'll put aside everything to make him happy. Glory to God. Ain't that amazing? There's an anointing to please and pleasure the Holy Ghost. There's an anointing to make Jesus happy. There's an anointing to keep on pleasing the heart of the Father. It's amazing. It's powerful. And, and this is what the Lord wills for everybody. You got to come into this place where he'll use you. He'll use you to bring pleasure to him. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 22, verse 38. It says, this is the first and greatest commandment. So your first greatest commandment, you got to love to love Jesus as your treasure. You have to love Jesus with all your, your emotions. You got to love Jesus with all your mind, your thoughts. You got to love Jesus with all of your motives. This is the first and greatest commandment. Now, this is what it means to be a prophet. And you got to master this if you're going to grow in the prophetic. So that the Lord can trust you with greater sight greater visions, greater assignments, uh, greater mentorship towards people. Because I mentor a large mass of people and Jesus has saw fit to pit me over them. But you have to work your way up the ranks by being faithful to God. Remember Proverbs chapter 28, verse 20, the faithful man shall abound with blessings. You have to work up in the ranks. You can't be someone uh, that uh, is lackadaisy. With the spirit of God, you have to be bold, you have to be courageous, and you have to let him raise you up. I, I need over 100 people, share this broadcast right now and receive the prophet's reward. Share this broadcast right now and receive the prophet's reward. Get the gospel out. Share this on your page right now. Now, look at Matthew chapter 22, verse 39. It says, and the second greatest commandment is like unto the first one. It says, thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. Wow. Wow. It said, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Saints, this is all about being a prophet. You have to love people as you love yourself. You have to treat people the way that you want to be treated. Never become too high-minded that you can't show love and kindness and compassion and be careful how you treat people because even if you be super hard on them and God has uh, uh, pit them before you, there might come a day where you need the mercy and God to be compassionate towards you and you want to reap what you sowed. So, I've learned that as a leader, how to uh, work with people and give them opportunities to be the best man, to be the best woman as much as it's possible. Because sometimes uh, Satan is fighting your life so strong and you might submit to Satan. And over the course of time, Jesus will use that anointing to break that chain and break that yoke up off of you. Maybe you can't see it at the time because pride never sees that you're being deceived. You understand? Pride will never see uh, flaw and never see wrong. Uh, but over time, as the spirit of God will deal with you, you'll begin to understand and you'll begin to see. Um, now, look at this. It says in Matthew chapter 22, verse 
39, it says, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. Look at verse 40. Now, this is Jesus talking. He said, on these commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. My God, did you catch this, saints? Jesus just said that loving the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and loving your neighbor as yourself hangs all the law and the prophets. What is Jesus saying here? Jesus is letting us know that he has placed this as a requirement, my God. If you're going to be the Lord's prophet, this is a law. You have to love Jesus above everything. And then you have to love people like you love yourself. You can't, you can't uh, treat yourself better than people. You got to treat people the same way that you want yourself to be treated. And he pit this. Look how he pit it. Since this, this is so powerful. He said, in verse 40, chapter 22, verse 40, on these two commandments. Wow, 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 wow. Saints, isn't it amazing? He didn't hang prayer on these two commandments. He didn't hang singing a song on these two commandments. This is what he hanged on these two commandments. He hanged the fact that you must love. You understand this? This is what he likened. These two commandments upon that you must love. Is it amazing that Jesus magnified love if you're going to be a prophet? So, so, so I'm telling you, get into the realm of love. Sons and daughters, if you're going to be pure in the prophetic, you have to love love. You have to release love. You have to practice love. You have to be trained to love. Because watch this. Even when you're truthful, the first, and you're in truth, the first thing you want to do is crucify people. But that's not the way to go. What Jesus wants you to love. Oh my God. This, this, this is... This is what God wants you to uh, uh, become habitual in, in choosing love, choosing God's response to an enemy, choosing God's response to a person. having a God response in all that you encounter in this life. You have to master this. You have to master this. You have to, you have to master this. Wow. 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 Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 18. Look at this saints. This is so amazing. Look at what Ezekiel chapter 18 says. Look at what Ezekiel chapter 18 says. Ezekiel chapter 18 says, Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? Oh, look at this, saints. We see the heart of Jesus in this. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? Saints, hereby we see the heart of the Lord. We see how his heart hurts. We see how Jesus, even though people choose hell, he don't want them to. That's why he sent prophets to you. That's why he sent apostles to you. That's why he sent men of God, women of God to you. Look what he say. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? Saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live. This is this the beautiful thing. Wow. 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 
Wow. We see the Lord calling for repentance. We see the Lord calling for people to turn from deception so that they could live and not suffer the wrath of God, eternal damnation, eternal hell. We see the love of God in this. Now you have to carry this heart as a prophet. Now this is in Ezekiel. And you know how Ezekiel moved in the spirit very strongly. We see the spirit of the Lord taking Ezekiel different places. So this will increase trances in your life when you're walking in the love of God. This will increase prophetic functionality, dreams, visions, the Lord speaking to you, the Lord showing you things, the Lord giving you dreams because you are in the love of God and God is love. So when you're in love, that means that you're in God. So all of God's characteristics are moving, all of God's abilities, all of God's power, all of God's graces, all of God's knowledge is moving through you. You understand this? So you, 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 are, you are in God. So you have his mind, his ways, his functionality, his uh, graces, his glory. Watch where it say, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, and mind, which is the greatest commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. And then it says, these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So it's letting you know that this is what the law of the prophets consist of. This is how you operate as a prophet. You love the Lord. You love others as you love yourself. Love is the secret to being a prophet. You have to manifest love. This is what God wants you to be a steward of. Walking in love towards people. Now, last but not least, we see in Matthew chapter uh, 22, verse 29, it says, you do err. Jesus is talking here. He says, you do err because you don't know the scriptures, nor do you know the power of God. And this is the error that happens when you don't know what scripture means and you don't know the power of God. You have to know both. You can't just know what scripture means. You have to know the power of God as well, or else you're going to see somebody moving in the power of God and you're going to demonize it. You have to know the power of God. Remember, Jesus spoke this, so we got to take it serious. He said, you do err, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. When you don't know the power of God, you can err. Because uh, the power of God is something that, that it moves in the way that it wants to move. However it wants to move. A lot of times it's against uh, your religious tradition and how you was raised. But you have to be open and you can't demonize it. And you can't uh, criticize the power of God or else you'll never be uh, privileged to walk in it. Uh, men that move in the power of God are often mocked because the power of God brings out demons out of people. It causes demons to manifest. You'll see that in Jesus's ministry that there'll be people on the scene that would manifest when Jesus came on the scene. Demons would manifest out of them and start talking. We'll see that in Apostle Paul's ministry as well. Apostle Paul had the girl with divination that was mocking him. So mockery comes with the release of the power of God. Write that down. That's a wisdom door. Mockery comes with the release of the power of God. I want to say that again. Mockery comes with the release of the power of God. Now, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, uh, no, let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5 verse 29 says, If your right eye offends you, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is, prof it, it is profitable for thee to enter, uh, enter into the kingdom of heaven uh, with one eye than for you to have your whole body cast into hell. Verse 30 says, If your right hand offends thee, cut it off. It is better for you to cast it from thee and have one uh, hand then to enter into hell with your whole body. Let me tell you what this is showing you. This is showing you an urgency from Jesus to let you know how important it is to cut things off from your life that's going to make you sin. If you know that is going to make you sin, cut it off. 
If it's a conversation, if it's a person, if it's an idea, if it's a thought, if it's an emotion, you know what emotion makes you sin. You know what thought makes you sin. You know what uh, conversation makes you sinful. You ever had a conversation and you grew angrier and angrier and angrier against a man or a woman of God? That ain't the Holy Ghost. That's witchcraft. Cut that thing off. All right. So that's what Jesus is telling you there. Cut it off. Now. We see in Matthew chapter five, uh, verse nine, it says, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. You have to be a peacemaker. If you're not a peacemaker, you're not a child of God. You're a child of Satan. If you do not have the ability to make peace, you are a child of Satan. You don't belong to God. You got to be careful of that. When you're a prophet, uh, you have to be cautious of that. Um, now, let's go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. It says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The seer's anointing is connected to having a pure heart. So, if I'm going to see God... Now, let me just say this. Let me just say this. Let me cl clarify this. Um, if somebody can see... That doesn't clarify that they are God's prophet. They can see, but that doesn't clarify. Here's how you know God's prophet. They can see God. For they shall see God. Meaning you have an intimacy with Jesus. You can see him. You, you know him. You're intimate with him. You're one with him. So... That's the, the privilege of a true seer. You see God. You see his person. You see his being. You see his substance. You see his power. You see his uh, glory. You see his ways. You see his heart. You see his instructions. You see his motive. So, so you can see God. All right? Now look at verse 10. Blessed are those which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Verse 11. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. That means that Jesus is having you do stuff and people are talking evil about you. People are fighting you. People are coming against you. This is going to happen when you have a true ministry as a prophet. Don't stop. Get it. Get it. Bless you. Follow me at Prophet Joshua Holmes on Periscope. Bless you in Jesus' name.